Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another Soul Hunters Hero Rankings video. This is part 5. So many people asked me to make this video so I had to drop everything else and literally get right to this, alright? Took a little bit of time but I got it done, alright? There's a bunch of new heroes that came out so I felt like they needed to be ranked so you guys don't blindly upgrade somebody that you should not be, okay? Heroes such as Killjoy, Ezio will be featured here and a bunch of other ones that you guys are probably going to enjoy, okay? So if you guys are excited about this video, be sure to leave a like, alright? That let, lets me know that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll have a bunch more coming for you guys, alright? So, as always, here's how the rankings work. We're going to take a hero and I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the hero, alright? Whether it's good to upgrade or not to upgrade, where you can use them and where you cannot use them, alright? After that, we're going to give it a grade. I'll grade it just so you guys know exactly where he falls in the hierarchy hierarchy of the grades. After that, it's up to you guys to decide if you want to keep the hero or not, alright? So this is my opinion. At the end of the day, it's your choice. If I give the hero an S, it'll be for superior. A, above average. B, below average. A C, you could use him. And D, is bad. For these nuts. Don't use them. I don't give anybody an F anymore because Fs are just not good. Nobody likes getting an F, alright? So that's how it works, very uh, basic, alright? So without any further ado, let's get right into the first hero of today's rankings, okay? It's gonna be the lovable clown who escaped the circus, Killjoy. So let's begin with a bang here, and this is Killjoy, guys, the runaway circus clown. Killjoy is a very interesting hero that I really, really enjoy, alright? I love using this guy, and I think that you guys will love using him as well. The reason why Killjoy is so good is because he is a great support tank all right now don't forget there's multiple types of tanks you have meat tanks which is just for damage you have support tanks like killjoy and you have dps tanks that do the damage right he's a support tank his number one asset is his ultimate doppelganger what he'll do is create a force field around himself anything all the opponents inside the force field will get a clone which then will turn around and attack themselves and then absorb a lot of damage from your opponent. This will stall your opponent, cause them to do a lot of damage um, to the clones and give your backline a lot of time to uh, get their ultimates off, which will help you out a lot. He's very tricky, very hard to counter in the arena and he's very, very good to use, alright? So I recommend you guys uh, definitely upgrade your Killjoy. Now if you can see in a battle, uh, Killjoy is very interesting to use. I make sure I always put him behind a tank, such as Leon, Drago, Elric, something like that, who's going to take most of the damage, right? As a uh, backline, you should have some heroes that will do good damage, Mortis, Garic, anybody like that that's going to do damage, right? What Killjoy is going to specialize in is, like I said before, he's going to get his ultimate off, which is his bread and butter. Once he gets his ultimate off, there he's going to make clones of the opponent's. As you can see, he's made clones of Leia there, and um, pretty much they're going to be attacking that hero for a while. This will give enough time for your backline to do their work. In this battle, he comes in very handy. He's got a bunch of clones there, and he gives Mortis and um, Ethera there some time to get their ultimates off. So, all in all, I think Killjoy is a pretty good support tank, guys. One of the best support tanks, actually. And uh, I'm going to give Killjoy an A, alright? He's definitely worth upgrading and promoting. So, if you have Killjoy, he's an above average tank. Work on him. Alright, next up we have Boober, the Goblin Gunner, who is very not interesting, alright? Boomer is weird hero. If you look at his abilities, his abilities on the contrary are very good. They sound great. His uh, ultimate will do massive physical AoE damage to the enemy so he'll take two bombs throw them into the field and they'll explode all right and hit a bunch of enemies for damage but it just feels like Boomer was a really really good early game hero and just never progressed the way that he should have towards the late game he's mostly an attack um, backline who's gonna deal a lot of damage his ice bomb is gonna freeze one of your enemies but it just feels like he doesn't do enough damage right he does give your team a physical crit increase which is nice but i feel like there's just a lot of better backliners to use in my opinion he has magic and physical attack so he's a dual attacker but just doesn't do 
enough for me in my opinion so I, as you can see i like to use them in a um this is a aoe type of team that i like to use because most of attacks will hit the back line and the midline of your opponent so it comes in handy in this type of a team and if you can upgrade him to orange that's fine but in my opinion i'm gonna give a uh, boomer here a b boo stands for boomer b because I think he's below average hero and there's definitely a bunch of other heroes I would put ahead of him, okay? So, B for Boomer. Alright, so next up we have another new hero. This is Vernos. And I'm pretty sure that this guy is vegan, alright? This guy does not eat meat. He's a straight up vegetarian or vegan all the way. Very interesting hero here, guys. A lot of you guys don't have uh, the chance to get this guy yet because you have to be level 90, alright? And you have to have 7 star heroes. Once you have a seven star hero, all the access soul stones you can spend in the, you know, traveling Trent shop to get his soul stone. So he's very tricky to get. He's an end game hero, but he is very, very interesting. All right. His ultimate is complex. It does a bunch of different things, but what he'll do is he'll reform into a tree, go in back of your team into a tree, right? And then he'll create three different types of plant. Well, there's six total, but he'll create three different types one will deal physical damage one will deal magic damage and one is going to restore some of his health all right now that's going to come in handy in a long battle the only problem is battles in the arena tend not to be that long so he tends not to last enough at seven stars i feel like he is going to be strong enough to survive a lot longer so he's going to be a lot more useful but four or five stars in a late game it's not good enough for him. Once he gets his ultimate off, that's when he really does some good work because he's going to have enough time to create all his plants, which will cause a lot of damage to your opponent, believe it or not. So he's not just a tank that doesn't deal damage. If he doesn't get his ultimate in time, it's pretty much game over. He is pretty useless. I do like his uh, Vines ability because he's able to trap multiple targets in a... Uh, in vines so they can't move they're immovable it's not one or two it's actually three heroes that he traps all right and uh he is another support tank that i feel like you cannot put him in your front line because his hp is not high enough and his defenses will not let make him last longer so he's better being behind somebody like a drago or an elric all right this will give him more time to use his ultimate go into the back line and create his plant as you can see here he creates two different types of plants meaning three in the front three in the back and this is sort of like plants versus zombies where the plants are gonna you know do their own thing deal some magic deal some physical damage and uh just pretty much help you get the win in this battle he did pretty well for me here because he was able to get his ultimate off and uh his plants did a, you know a lot of a lot of damage surprisingly as you can see he's third in damage so not bad so if i have to grade vernos for now i'm going to give vernos it's tricky but he's going to get a better grade than boomer that's for sure i'm going to give him a an a minus all right he's above average hero but not great above average not yet all right i think you need him at i think he needs to be a six to seven stars for him to be very reliable all right so Vernos a minus for me. All right, so next up we have probably the coolest looking hero of all guys We have Arcturus the ice dragon and this guy is covered in ice from head to toe. He's probably made out of ice and um, Arcturus is a great Hero, all right a lot of people don't agree with me I don't know why but I feel like this guy is really really good if you use him for the right, you know situations you cannot use him as a uh, you know, your DPS here or somebody who will do damage. Although he does deal damage. He is a support backliner, okay? You need to have other heroes who will deal the damage for him. And have him come in and just pretty much apply the support that they need. He does, he has his crystal shield. Which will give your um, team physical armor of one hero. They'll, he'll give him a physical armor increase. His ice jet ability, his ultimate, will freeze your opponent, alright? This is the best... One of the best ultimates that I feel like because it gives your team a lot of extra time for them to, uh, you know, get off their ultimates. Because in a battle, it's pretty much who gets their ultimates off first that will end up winning. I love using Arcturus in an AoE team, alright? The reason for that is his second ability 
the glacier one will hit your opponent and then shatter into multiple different pieces and hit everybody else as well it does a good amount of damage believe it or not to, to all of your opponents all right so it does good damage and also he'll freeze them and slow them down so he provides slow he freezes them and he does some damage so i feel like he's a really really good really good support uh backline here okay in my opinion i'm going to give arturis an a all right because he's an above average hero and you should definitely work on him okay from all the support heroes i feel like he comes you know one of the top three for sure in my opinion okay so definitely work on your Arcturus, guys he will not you know let you down in a lot of arena fights all right moving on here we have that crazy butcher shirley now surely 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 where do i begin with this girl <laughs> Pretty much everybody knows that Shirley has not lived up to her potential at all, alright? Very weird, I don't understand why, but it's because she just does not survive enough. I feel like her abilities are counterintuitive. Her meat hook is a good ability, alright? But the problem is, it feels like it only hits the front lines for some reason. Where it would be so much more beneficial for her if she always hits a backline or a midline hero. She tends to always hit the front line, which is pretty useful, useless because they're already in the front line, obviously. Her Mortal Mist and her Manic Chop are kind of... I just don't understand why they have these two abilities because her Mortal Mist will cause her to... It will cause her damage to herself and then her Manic Chop will regain her damage. But in my opinion, why even have Mortal Mist in the first place? Why have those two abilities there? Why not have Mortal Mist just deal damage to the opponent? Because I feel like they just counter each other. Because if you're going to take away her HP, why give it right back? So in my opinion, I feel like they're countering each other. She would be so much better if she didn't deal damage to herself with Mortal Mist. Her final ability is supposed to give her extra health. But I just feel like it's just not enough. She tends to always die in every battle that you put her in. She will. You cannot use her as your front tank once again. She is a, uh, another support. She is a DPS. Theoretically, she's a DPS tank. She's supposed to be doing a lot of damage to the opponent. But with her low defenses and HP not as high, she tends to die really quickly. All right? The one good thing about Shirley is she is available in the Crucible shop now. So... A lot of people are going to be able to get her a lot quicker and test her out more. But in my opinion, so far, she's not good. Hopefully, the game will boost her up and make her a lot more usable, which would be really nice and needed for her. But as of right now, I'm going to have to give um, Shirley a C. All right, she will get a C for me. You could use her, but there's so many other heroes that you should definitely prioritize before her now unlike Shirley we have Tanya here the blind executioner who is night and day opposite of Shirley all right Tanya is another front tank believe it or not she's a tank but she's not a tank she is a DP DPS hero okay so you can use her as a tank just like Shirley but she is really good all right in the arena she comes in handy when used in the right situations but I would not use her in the arena as much. I use her a lot in the Hall of Legend. She does a lot of damage. All right. So that's where she really does good at. She does really good in some bosses for the raids. All right. Her attacks are very, very nice. Her ultimate will attack the lowest physical attack hero of your opponent. All right. So whoever has the lowest physical attack, she's going to attack him and deal a ton of damage. She's always fighting the opposite side of the field. All right. So that's the good thing about her. She's going to attract a lot of attention to her, giving your other heroes more time to get their ultimates, which is a really nice thing. All right. It's nice for your team, but it's not always nice for her because that is also the cause of her demise because she takes a lot of damage really quickly. Most likely, she's going to be your first hero dead every time. Because she's always lurking in the uh, opponent side of the field, alright? Now, there's a lot of different lineups that you can use with uh, Tanya here. But I prefer, you know, I prefer a lineup that does a lot of uh, damage with her ultimate, alright? This is where I kind of like to use her the most. You need, I used, in this lineup, I used Arcturus to slow the opponent down. And this is the good thing that Tanya did for me in this battle is because... 
She's in the opposite side of the field attacking Gizmo, all right? This will give enough time for the rest of my team to get their ultimates off. And she pretty much kills Gizmo even though she ends up dying in the process. But once you can kill your opponent's Gizmo, it's pretty much going to be game over because that will most likely be their DPS hero, all right? So if your opponent can deal damage to you, then they can't kill you, obviously. So it pans out really good. She always attacks gizmo because he's got a very very low physical attack all right so she's a pretty good counter to gizmo but most likely she's gonna end up dying by an ultimate from gizmo all right so that's the only thing that kind of sucks about it now ranking tanya i think tanya is a really good uh hero okay so you need to upgrade tanya she is very useful in a lot of situations a lot of battles in the hall of legend so anybody who's useful in the hall of legend is <laughs> good in my book all right so i'm gonna give tanya an a all right, she's an above average hero, and if you have the resources, work on Tanya. All right, guys, so we finally made it to the moment of truth, the final hero for this episode, and it's gonna be Ezio. Not Ezio, Ezio, guys. The most awesome hero that the game has released yet. This guy was seven stars on day one. For a lot of people that wanted to spend the money, you know, they got him at seven stars on day one, and he was immediately, immediately, in every lineup right away all right the top guys you cannot be top anymore unless you have this guy as your tank Ezio is a beast to say the least his um dodge is out of the planet he dodges magic and physical attacks unlike Hanzo who only dodges physical Ezio dodges both kill streak will hit every opponent cold vengeance is ultimate will pretty much take out you know, uh, enemy that's low in HP every time. Legendary Stealth will cause him to uh, dodge every 12 seconds. And Eagle Eye, his last ability, will also increase his dodge even further. I mean, this guy is incredible. I have seen him take out heroes, you know, 3-on-1, 2-on-1. On it's pretty much a, uh, a gone-given conclusion that if you have Ezio on your lineup, it's going to be very beneficial all right so then right now he is number one hero in the game by far in my opinion there is nobody else that comes close to him check out this battle that i have with Ezio here it looks pretty good for me in the beginning but it turns around very quickly here so all my heroes use their ultimates here but riley ends up jumping in the back killing slim there and Mortis jumps in, kills Garik. So I'm pretty much left with Ezio and Mortis. Ezio's HP is pretty much dead. He uses ultimate there, almost takes out Mortis, but not quite. So it's three on one, and I'm pretty sure the battle is over. I'm dead, but not yet. There goes Ezio, dodging every single attack. Takes out Mortis. He takes this like a champ from Dokras, still survive. Uses his ultimate on Dokras. Doesn't kill it, but... There's kill streak, five attacks, all right, in a row, and the one hero cannot deal with that, and it's pretty much game over. Check out the, the damage from Ezio. It's just too many things I can't even describe how good this guy is. He is incredible, guys. All right, the best hero in the game right now. So you can kind of guess what I'm gonna give Ezio. It's definitely an S plus, best hero in the game. All right. So if you are fortunate enough to get Ezio. <laughs> definitely should be your number one priority upgrade them all the way all right you could got if you don't have them you could buy them 99 cents will get you Ezio at three stars three stars should be good enough all right you don't have to spend 100 200 dollars whatever you want to spend you know 150 you don't have to spend that if you don't want to three stars will do it maybe eventually they release the soul stone you can get them later but if you have the means definitely get Ezio all right in my opinion best hero in the game all right everybody so we've come to another conclusion of soul hunters hero rankings part five i hope you guys enjoyed that if you did please leave a like it helps me to know which videos you guys enjoy which ones you don't and uh i'll definitely have another one when more heroes are released all right i'll do a bunch of different hero rankings uh type videos in the future but for now this will be it and i'll see you guys next time all right so till then, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night.